Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Most people do not see the power of God because the only thing they respect is his power, not his word. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Now, the man talking to you by the privilege of God's mercies, when it comes to this power ministry bar, honestly, I understand it. You believe me on that. Unfortunately, those who experience the power of God are not those who focus on his power those who experience the power of God are those who know what to do with his word the word of God is currency when you get to the marketplace of destiny you exchange it for power and it is that power that does the purchasing but it comes with the word when you enter a mall you can use your card but from the gate there is a pass before you even enter the mall that passes the word of God power is only available at the point of purchase but at the point of entry Jesus the word said I am the way he never called power the way I am the way you see that now he sent forth his word his word he led them but the dynamics of that healing is that at the point of correcting that anomaly it was his power and yet it was his word if I ask you to bring me a meal ladies you would usually put that meal on a tray am I right so if I say bring pounded yam and uh, what do you take in Jalingo huh Abba, don't don't do this to me this is my first night huh fish okay let's let's assume whatever you say you are right so if I say bring whatever you want to serve me sometimes you see women holding a giant tray and you are wondering what is on that tray you look at something that looks like toothpick something that looks like salt and pepper something that looks like water a glass all kinds of things but it's one big tray carrying them if you ignore that tray you will waste your time because you can't pick everything one by one that tray has the ability to lift everything drop it upon your table but what you eat is not the tray what you eat is the food but if you respect the food and ignore the tray it will not even arrive the word of god is the conveyor of the possibilities of the kingdom the word of god is the conveyor of healing the conveyor of lifting the conveyor of prosperity the conveyor of influence when you embrace the word you have embraced the tray that has brought your portion let me tell you what most of us do rather than waiting for the tray in this example to come you get into the kitchen and you are battling to pick salt or pick something your destiny needs that salt but that's not the way you should get it the tray it comes with the word are we together now and God said let there be light and there was light so if I can find what God has said concerning my life before I focus on what he has said I focus on who said it is he reliable there are wealthy people in your city and some of them are people God has blessed if they look at you and say I want to help you come and take a house tomorrow you will not say your excellency can I have a receipt because uh, it looks like you are inconsistent in your character will you say that you will start rejoicing you will start calling people and say by God's grace God has answered me what happened I spoke to whether a governor or a senator or whoever and he said you will help my family with a house they say so what is your evidence your evidence was the word he gave you unfortunately for him there's no oath there was only a promise 
You see that now? And yet, because of the promise alone, you rejoice. You can't sleep. 6 a.m. in the morning, you are celebrating. What kind of house will it be? Look at your mind. You never doubt for once. Sometimes it looks too good to be true. Then you remember that he once told your neighbor and your neighbor got a house. I said, no, he can't be playing with me. That is integrity. There are things God says concerning you that looks too good to be true. Like I will give you triplets. Like I will honor you as a man of God. Like you will lay your hands upon the sick. How do you lay bare hands like this upon an infirmity? Something that has a medical report. And actually expect the person to be healed. Who do you think you are? That is the immutability of his counsel. There is nothing I do not believe. Provided God has said it concerning me. I believe it I believe it if he says you will go to the nations of the earth and you will preach Jesus and no gate will shut against you I believe it we are not sufficient in ourselves the results that you see is a product of the simplicity and the foolishness of trusting the integrity of God some of us are too scientific to see God's power we calculate everything and we are used to people disappointing us so we join God in the list this commissioner disappointed me this governor disappointed me maybe God is like them Moses came to God and said who shall I go and tell Pharaoh don't destroy my life I ran away from Egypt there is a case waiting for me in Egypt I killed a man years ago so that they don't go and revisit that case and destroy me. Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? One word. I am that I am. Or one expression. He said, go and tell Pharaoh. Search the archives of the gods you know. Is there such a God with such a name? I am that I am. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man. Look at me. Let me tell you how to get God's power to move. Something is about to happen here now. I want you to listen carefully. With all due respect, whether it's co-laborers in the gospel, let me tell you how God's power moves. No matter what vision, no matter what dream, I don't care what encounter you have. If you cannot find the written word that gives you the basis of confidence, you are standing on shadows. No matter how accurate your vision is, the Bible calls scripture a more sure word of prophecy. That means the ranking of prophetic words are in levels. Not every prophetic word carries the same weight in the spirit. There is a basis for trying prophecy. And some prophetic words are weaker than others. They carry the weakness of the vessels that communicate them. But because scripture has been tried seven times, it sustains the power to run your life. Run your life. I'm a man given to many encounters by the grace of God. But I have learned the, the deception of building my life around visions, prophetic words. I don't despise prophesying. But my life is solidly built upon the word of God. Anything I have not found scripture for, I have not found a trigger for action. No matter how long I will stay, I'd rather be delayed trusting God than to take action in obscurity, not being sure. If I ask you why are you doing ministry today and you say I was standing in a vision, oh, you missed it already. Tell me the vision after you show me the scripture. Did you get that now? Apostle, I'm going to put a great healing meeting. What makes you believe the meeting will succeed? I've been experiencing a, an unusual dimension of God's anointing. No, sir. You will be disappointed even if your hand is shaking on that crusade ground. One person will not rise from the wheelchair because the shaking of hands and bodily manifestations of the spirit, they are real, but they have not been accredited to be the way that power of God flows. It is his word. It is his word. But when he speaks, 
War betides whatever stands to fight the word of God in a man's life. Who is learning tonight? For some of us, God is telling you the reason why this year is still looking like last year is because you have not respected God's word yet. You have respected men of God. You have respected Apostle Joshua Selman. You've respected the prophetic word I gave you, but you've not respected the supremacy of God's word. You've even respected anointing, and I'm not against that. It's my first assignment. The believer is not just one who is saved. The believer is one among many other indices. Is one who has chosen as an act of your will to submit to the supremacy of God's word to govern your life in any and all matters. This is what makes you a believer. With all due respect again, I don't know why God is leading me. Dear servants of the Lord, co-laborers, I beseech you by the message of God that we focus our build-up strategy for God's people to the ministry of the word. Don't be under pressure to show visions and charismatic manifestations. They are wonderful. But if all you can do is the simplicity of the teaching ministry, feel confident. There is a pressure on men of God. Once there's no manifestation, no power, no prophetic word, you look less of a man of God. And most people are deviated from the simplicity of the teaching ministry. Number two, don't be under pressure to teach new things. Just make sure what you teach is fresh. We are mandated to communicate freshness. The curriculum for the building of the believer is like the curriculum that turns a medical student, a, a, a young boy to a medical student. A professor who has been teaching in the university for 30 years has largely been teaching the same thing. With new experiences added occasionally, but with freshness. The ability to have taught it again and again is where mastery comes from. The way you drove yesterday is how you will drive tomorrow. Even if the location is different, the techniques, the mechanics is the same. When we call you a professional, we mean you have repeated the same thing so well, you have gained mastery. Are we learning? The pressure to always try to say something new or the pressure to always you know we, we try to call it backing up your ministry it's not your assignment you build the people if you build them authentically there will always be a witness to what you are doing but beyond the power of God the focus must be on the Word of God what has God said what has God said apostle why do you think your life is going to be great It's because I am prayerful I respect what you are saying but give me a chance to listen to the content of your prayer. If the content of your prayer is not word compliant, you have been praying amiss, even though energetically so. What gives power to your prayer is not the volume, the energy, nor even the timing. It is the word compliancy. The degree to which the word of God is invested in your prayer is what brings power to it. Are we together now? You are a businessman. What gives you the basis of doing business well? is because I read business administration. Unfortunately, the Bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but that he gives his beloved sleep. If you tell me the basis of my excelling is that I have found in scripture, are we together now? That the Lord can give men power to prosper. That there is a spirit in man. And that the breath of the Almighty is able to make men of understanding. Now you are talking God's language. His power can be sure to be there. Feeling or no feeling. The basis is because you have called forth the word. That becomes the basis of the power. Who is understanding me so far? Next time you stand before a sick body. Don't just be power conscious. The power will flow. It is true it will flow. The sick will be healed. But the basis for it is God said. My assignment as a man of God is to be a midwife. To draw forth what God has said. And administer what he has said. And trust the power of God to back what he has said. That I am in obedience to. Why do you believe? That the Peniel Conference 2024 is going to be a great experience. Ah, because there are mighty men of God coming. 
Apostle Joshua Selman is coming. You may be sincere, but you are wrong. The reason is because the Bible says, number one, the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Number two, because God always works with men. When you mention that scripture, now you can mention our names by grace and you are right but not outside of scripture i'm doing something there is a spiritual engineering that god is doing to your mind tonight bringing you to a point where you respect the supremacy of the word do not cheapen the word it is most superior it builds all things all things came from it all things that includes your destiny includes your tomorrow will come from the word of god hallelujah when God gave us the mandate to go to the nations, I said, Lord, I believe you. You don't go to social media and check how many people follow you, how many people like you. No. That will bring you to disappointment. You go to God's word. You have given a mandate. Lord, your power follows your word. What have you said concerning this? And then he tells you, go to the ends of the earth. You shall be witnesses unto me. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. I hold on to that word. You have given me a mandate, your promise, but I bring before you the oath that by the promise and the oath, it is impossible for God to lie. Now that you have given me the marching order, as frail as I am, let's go. And the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word, not confirming their intention, confirming the word. If there is no word, there is nothing to confirm with signs following. I'm showing you a secret that can make an ordinary person look like a sign and a wonder. Men will look at you and size you and you don't add up because what really produces the, the power and the miracles is not your personality. It is the word that you have built your life around. If you were to see Jesus, you would be disappointed in the flesh. He would not look like a savior, but he was the savior because his name is not the power of God. His name is the word, the logos of God. Something is about to happen here now. We're about to wrap up for tonight. I see a dove just around this place. That's what I see. Because every time his word is honored, the spirit of God must give witness to his word. Because God is a God of integrity. If the things that I've said about God and his word are true, then he will have to leave a signature of his power upon that word, bringing credence to both his servant and bringing credence to his word. This is how it works. So in examining the integrity of God's word, my simple message for you tonight, even before we go to the subject of your theme, is can God be trusted? And if your answer is yes, defend your answer. Don't just say yes. Why do you trust God? Because I'm a Christian. Wrong. Wrong. You don't trust God because you are a Christian. You trust God because he has made manifesto of his character as captured in scripture. Genesis to Revelation is an unashamed, is a, is a plethora of God's works. The things he said and the things he did. Should I tell you of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak? Men through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Is it not in your Bible? Men defied the words of kings on account of what God said. They superimposed situations. Ordinary men, weak and frail in ministry, in business. They excelled and they, ex they exalted the agenda of God in their generations. Because they could take the word of God. Once upon a time, there were three Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because it is written, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. They held on to that word. And when Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet statue, pure gold. And he said, at the sound of the timbrel, the, all of the music instruments, that everyone would bow. Those boys came and they said, listen, O king, we are not people given to dishonor. However, 
there is a war that we are standing upon we cannot violate it because of the threats that are coming in this matter of worship we have pledged our allegiance to the god of heaven alone and we will not bow he says our god will deliver us we know this about his power back in his word but even if he does not deliver us we are settled on that fact that we will not bow to you the king said all right so you take the risk sometimes trusting god is risky there are times you are trusting him so that you will not get into the fire but the miracle happens when you are in the fire if i were the one standing before nebuchadnezzar i know what my prayer will be god you are the deliverer help me let me not have to enter this fire it's not a good experience those who are about to throw me are already burning don't add me to the list help me you are a merciful god that would be my prayer but there are times where god want to produce greater glory it will look like he's slack but the bible says god is not slack in his promises as some men count slackness so that even if you step into the fire do you know what that means god can ask you to come to jalingo and for the first two years it will look like you are wasting your time here people will look at you and say i agree now that you are a fool and sometimes you will feel stupid for trusting god be patient when you get into that fire stop looking at nebuchadnezzar look around you will see a fourth man in that fire a fourth man in honor to your word and the bible says nebuchadnezzar looked and he saw the form of the fourth like the son of god and he said were there not three men that were turned here into the fire and then when he saw them the bible says these were men that the fire had no power over there is nothing you cannot do there's no mountain you cannot move if you have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word you're not about there is nothing listen he cannot do money for ministry your influence the healing of that sickness sorting your children you don't know who god is go and open your bible and see the manifesto of a wonder walking god it says our lord god thou has made the heavens and the earth by thy great power but that power responds to his word read your bible and see hopeless situations that were turned around at the instance of his word once upon a time at cana of galilee john chapter 2 the bible says there was such a glorious feast like this and the wine had finished and they came to him and he gave them the word he did not touch the pot he didn't touch the cups he did not even touch the servants he said whatever he tells you not whatever you want to do mary showed them the answer listen to what he says that's where the power is don't look at the pot the power is not there don't look at the cup the power is not there don't look at your ability to fetch water the power is not there allow him speak because when he does water can turn to wine even when there is no water he can make rivers in the desert this is my message to you yola return to the supremacy of god's word stake your life on it be a fool while doing it and let the wisdom of God find expression through the frailty of your faith. And you stand before the nations as a sign and a wonder. A testament of what it means to trust God. This I have proven with my life. This I have tested with my life. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Mama your child's school fees will not come from any uncle stop disappointing yourself after this service tonight leave every uncle who is wasting your time god will use men but don't choose the men he will use allow his word choose the men he will use trying to choose the men your margin of accuracy will be less than one percent because you will act in the flesh 
Are we together? You are sick in your body. Don't just lay hands on yourself and say be healed. You will not be healed that way. It is not the laying on of hands. It's the word that you believe that makes for the laying on of hands. So if I were you, please look up. We're about to pray. This is what I will do. I will go back home this night and write the various aspects of my life. Finances, family, health, and begin to write scriptures through discipline. Find the scriptures beyond the vision you have had. Thank God for the vision. Write the scriptures. Man of God, what gives you the basis that God is going to bring men to your church? Oh, I'm from Jalingo. You, are, you will be disappointed a thousand times. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Write it down. What is the basis of your longevity? I'm eating well. I studied food and nutrition. Go and find out how many professors have died. You find what is written. Are we together now? Listen sincerely and I stand before the God of heaven. This includes those who are watching. This is how to live a profitable Christian life. Don't remove superstition from your Christian experience and give, build on the rock. Build on the word. Build on his speakings. The rain will come. The wind will blow. The storms will rise. But I can tell you because you have built on the rock, when everything is down, you will still be standing. Standing in ministry. Standing in destiny. But when you build on any other foundation that is not of Christ, the building can look glorious and one tornado type problem will come and wash everything away. You ask me the basis for doing ministry. I will show you the scriptures. The speakings of God. Before I tell you my encounters. I will not tell you by the message of God. That I am excelling in ministry today. Because I had a vision of Jesus. It doesn't matter how many times I see Jesus. Many saw him and they are even dead now. It's not that they failed. They still died. Seeing him is not what gives life. Finding the word of life. Is what gives life. Matthew 4.4 4. Man shall not leave. Look at this. Bishop, there are many schools of thought as to dissecting this scripture. But let me be as elementary as possible. So Satan is conversing with Jesus. This is Jesus, full of the word. This is Jesus, driven by the spirit. This is Jesus, having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights what kind of power should not be found in such a man you would think after the experience of being full of the word being full of power being full of fasting and prayer satan should be the least person to be found in the presence of such a man yet the first person that jesus saw after praying fasting full of the word full of power was satan and satan was not shaking and running away with all the fasting and the power he stood there as if jesus was wasting his time let me tell you what drove satan it is written it is written say it after me it is not i saw it is not i heard it is not i dreamt it is If Jesus used that formula to drive Satan out of his life, don't use any other formula to drive negative situations. You can be full of power. You can be full of grace. You can be full of discernment. But the basis for your dominion is what is written. It is written that you are the head and not the tail. Who believes that? It is written that you are above and not beneath. It is written that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. But none shall hurt you with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. It is written that Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. It is written that you shall be called Beulah and Hepzibah, a delightsome land. It is written that kings shall entreat your favor. Is that in your Bible? It is written that whatsoever he doeth, 
prospers. It is written that the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. It is written that life and death are in the power of the tongue and that those who speak it shall eat the fruit thereof. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. Choose life. Therefore, I choose life because it is written that if I choose life, no enchantment and no divination against me shall stand. That surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall come in one way and they shall scatter in seven ways. It is written. It is written. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs. Yola, say we are for signs. Man of God, say we are for signs. Yes, sir. Everyone God has placed under your prophetic, apostolic, pro, uh, pastoral covering. We are for signs and for wonders. It is written, Gentiles will come to my light. It is written, they are kings to the promise of my right. Ah. It is written that when the Holy Spirit is poured upon on, from on high, my wilderness shall be turned to a fruitful vine and my fruitful vine be turned to a forest. It is written that whatsoever I do prospers. Is it not written in your Bible that by you I shall run, I can run through a troop and by my God I can leap over a wall. Do you believe what is written? If you do, then you believe in God's integrity. I'm shaking off superstitious Christianity and bringing you to a place where your life is planted on a more sure word that everything you find that God has said, you can take your destiny to it. If it be thou, bid me come. Walk upon that business water. Walk upon that ministerial water. You may walk baby steps, but walk confidently because he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one defending his jealousy over your life. Why do you expect the power of God to flow through you? Because he says, thou anointest my head with oil. Oh, my head does not lack oil. No. There is a covenant that maintains oil upon my head. Why do you pray? Because I love prayer. Not enough reason. Why do you pray? Because he said, it is written, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Because he says, pray without ceasing. Because he says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Why do you pray? Because he says, is any man afflicted, let him pray. Why do you give? Because I'm transacting business with Jesus. Ah, uh ah, -uh, you've missed it there. Why do you give? Because of love. The character of love is that it gives. Number one, I give because I love God. I give because I love his house. But I also give because there is integrity. A covenant of increase that is connected to my giving. That God is able on account of my giving. To make all grace abound towards me. So that I being sufficient in all things. Will abound to every good work. Apostle, are you not afraid of the arrows that fly by day? I do not deny them, but there is dominion over them. Because I am seated with Christ. This is not a theory for me. Exalted, above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. What gives you the basis for the success of tomorrow? Because the word of God can transcend time. I can send the word of God like a marshal to line and wait for me in my tomorrow. I can send the word of God into 2015, uh, 2025, 2026 and it waits for me there. I may not be able to enter tomorrow yet, but the word of God can be there. It says this is the day that the Lord has made. How does he make the day? By saying. Why do you speak? Because the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let the progressive of the lord say so let the empowered of the lord say so when men say there is a casting down i don't deny that but i will not peg my life with that confession honestly i believe that there is a lifting up i may not know the way but the bible says i shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it and i will find rest for my soul 
the Lord is my shepherd I refuse to be in want there is wisdom to give me solution at every point in my life hold on you are as powerful as the level of spiritual illumination that you have you are as powerful as the word of God you have come to believe and to embrace it is a risk to trust any other thing in your life above the word of God employment certificate spouse uncle auntie anointing church apostle pastor wonderful as they are the moment they find themselves exalted above the word of god you have stepped into idolatry we have to end tonight and to introduce my session but we are going to pray has god challenged someone tonight let me speak to a young man here who wants to start ministry do not stand the risk of building ministry just around visions and experiences write all the visions write all the experiences as you grow you will see how wrong you are in many things you thought you saw leave it there for your learning but stay with the word your margin of error will be very small when you stay with the word when you build your around your life around a lot of superstitious experiences worship us when you write songs don't write songs based on feeling sing scripture sing the word of god are we together don't just conjure nonsense and sing it because you like it make sure what you are saying is the word of god if your song is on thanksgiving don't don't glorify flesh what does the word of god say about thanksgiving use that for the lyrics of your song that's why you never forget don moen and bob fitz because they sing scripture. So we're going to be praying. I will lay down my idols in thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord listen Jalingo hear me the difference between an excelling believer one who has the testament of God's faithfulness upon his life and a confused incoherent destabilized believer who is in a sorry state misrepresenting God's word the difference is not the love of God for the same Lord is rich unto all the difference is what has created your spiritual orientation what you have chosen to exalt my recommendation in love tonight to all men Jalingo extending to the body of Christ across the northeast from the beat of the grace of God and the experience of his mercy that we have seen. Tonight is a call to return to the world. Pastors, return to the world. Prophet, prophesy. But let your prophecy submit to the world. Evangelist, don't preach emotions. The content of your sermon is already in scripture. Don't invent one find what is written then you also find the power that backs it miracle workers no matter what you do stay within the boundary of God's word teach us of truth as you explore the concordances and the lexicons and the Greek and the Hebrew words be mindful do not go out of the coordinates of God's word the gospel is simple enough reviving and converting the soul transforming the one who is saved and empowering the one who is transformed this is how great people were built this is how mighty men were made I have had the obsession to call the body of Christ back to respect the supremacy of the world in addition to your honor to the Holy Spirit 
in addition to your honor for his presence, his power, and all the other things that the kingdom allows. Let me tell you, if you want to be a man of faith and power, get back to the word. Do not be ignorant of scripture. Written in the Bible is how to prosper. You use another formula, you also go with the consequence that came with it. Written in the Bible is how to raise your children. Be careful as you invent another formula. Written in the Bible is how ordinary men became champions. You use another formula, there will always be a consequence. Written in the Bible were lonely people who became captains of hundreds and thousands and millions. Written in the Bible were ordinary men, idol worshippers who became men of power and stature. You are not the first to look for power. The formula is here. Written in the Bible were people who were lonely like fugitives and vagabonds, but God gave them their own estate and their own space in life and destiny. Written in the Bible was famine and all kinds of things, and men like Isaac sowed in that same land. There is a formula to prosper. The problem is not Jalingo. The problem is your understanding. The demons you see today had existed right from here. If they did not stop those whose testimonies were archived here, they should not stop you. If the demons look powerful, they are only preying on your ignorance. Because they are called rulers of darkness. Their dominion is at the mercy of darkness. Every time there is darkness, they rule. Mama, you are not the first person to raise children without any support. There was a woman called the widow at name. There was a woman in Zarephath. There have been many of such people. There is always a way to come out of calamity. Is it to come out of the, of, of the lion's den? Esther, you are not the first one to rise. Go and watch about the village girl in the Bible who God took from Shushan until she became queen. The things that are written aforetime, Jalingo, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Can we pray? Are you ready to pray? I want to engage you for a few minutes in prayer and then I speak over your life for tonight and we're done. Whether you are standing, whether you are sitting, please participate in this prayer session because something will happen to you. If you can pray in the spirit, go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute and just build your inner man and I give you a few prayer points. The integrity of God's word. Go ahead and pray. Jalingo, is this how you pray? Someone is praying. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Those across the windows, make sure you are praying. Sabala Sabranda Gabala Kusiata. Those who are following by television, you're watching by television, you're watching by the internet, go ahead. Take a few minutes to invest in your spiritual life. God can be trusted that by the oath and the promise, by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent has he said it you will do it has he spoken it you will make it good the lord visited sarah as he has said he did unto sarah as he has spoken my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth go ahead and pray someone go ahead and pray Shake away unbelief as you pray because you are entering a new prophetic season. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the mighty God, the one who strengthens men. Teaching your hands to war, your fingers to fight.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now you are going to pray that everything you have dethroned you have enthroned above the word of God that it must come to the obedience of the word whether it's your ability whether it's your skill whether it's your intelligence whether it's men anything at all you have exalted that your confidence is hinged upon outside of scripture I want you to dethrone it tonight that the word of God will gain supremacy over your consciousness over your mind and over the activities of your life and destiny go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the grace to believe the word of God the grace to build upon the integrity of the word someone is praying man of God you build upon the word it will not fail you build your home upon the word it will not fail God can be trusted God is reliable he sustains the wherewithal to bring his word to pass go ahead and pray it is written is greater than I saw it is written is greater than I heard it is written is greater than I dreamt it is written is greater than I, I I felt all those channels are wonderful but above and beyond them is the written word of God tried seven times tested through generations he found where it was written concerning him in Jesus name we pray the final prayer point that I'll give you tonight and I want you to pray this with all your heart pray it passionately remember I told you when you find the word of God my God I'm seeing light now, when I see that light I see that light and I'm seeing the number five one two three four five is resting upon five people help that lady resting upon five people this is what the Lord is ministering to me resting upon five people we're going to pray the final prayer point hopefully tomorrow we'll have the time to minister to the sick and make sure you invite everyone in Jalingo even if they will sit on the roof they should come tomorrow morning evening it's 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 an encounter by the spirit to shift you to another level are you ready to pray this prayer hallelujah hold on please hold on now there's a gentleman you will not come out we don't have the time but i just want to speak prophetically to you wherever you are i see that your family has been bound by witchcraft there's something i'm going to teach you tomorrow that you need to learn but the Lord is telling me he's bringing liberty to that that is a gentleman Ezekiel that is the name of the gentleman Ezekiel that is your name the hand of God is resting upon you and your family your, you and your family the Lord will begin to bring strange visitations your name is Ezekiel in the name of Jesus now we're going to pray the power of God functions within the jurisdiction of the written word you see remember that that the power of God can do all things but the power of God like electricity passes through a wire is that true electricity passes through a conductor to where it is needed to be profitable how many of you have seen something called naked wire as we call it in Nigeria and you touch that thing and the same electricity that is hitting someone's food is shocking someone to death somewhere because of the mismanagement of its administration so the power of God only works within the jurisdiction of the world now that you have found God's word I want you to engage the power of God father I believe in your word for my healing let your power to heal flow towards my life 
I believe in your word that prospers. Let your power to prosper flow to my life. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. Go ahead. Go ahead. Those who are watching from their homes, participate in the prayer. You are not just watching a live broadcast. Participate in the prayer. Make sure you are praying. Father, I expect to see your power moving, birthing possibilities in my life, birthing possibilities in ministry, possibilities in my family, possibilities over challenging situations because I have embraced your word. I also embrace the power that backs that word. Because I have embraced your word, I embrace the power. I have embraced your lifting word. Let the lifting power come. I've embraced your healing word. Let the healing power come. I've embraced the miracle word. Let the miracle power come. His power always flows in honor to, in defense for the word. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm hearing in my spirit, search the scripture. This is a prophetic word for a man of God. The Lord is saying the key to your next level in ministry is to go for a retreat and find strategic scriptures and pray those scriptures obtaining knowledge on how to activate the principles hidden there that becomes a code for your next level of exploits in ministry whoever that man is in the name of jesus let that grace rest on you let that grace rest on you the grace that empowers you for someone the exploits you will begin to command after this conference it will marvel you and marvel all those who know you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now please look up I have to honor the time I want to make an altar call an altar call is a miracle that I am growing to appreciate I have seen signs and wonders I have seen God move I've seen God do great things by his message I live in the reality of this extraordinary wonders of the spirit but as I continue to know God and learn him as he grants me the honor of his presence and the wisdom of his word. I am amazed at the miracle that happens to men when they come to Jesus. It's a miracle that we have not done enough justice in understanding. So most times when people come, we just emotionally clap. But the Bible tells us that a real miracle happens. A translation. Please look at me, brothers and sisters. Whether you are connecting by television or the overflow so many people some standing some sitting this may be the most important word you'll be hearing tonight the word can be an information captured in scripture but I forgot to tell you that the word is also a person and that person stripped himself of everything God became a man representing the love of the father and the Bible lets us know that he humbled himself to die even the death on the tree. He did that as a demonstration of his love. The death of Jesus was not a demonstration of power. It was a demonstration of love. Love beyond power. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, that he gave Jesus, who died for you and I, and Jesus is the key to the kingdom, the only access point to find reconciliation. Perhaps you were invited for this conference this year or you've come around for previous conferences and hearing pastor after pastor man of God after man of God for the first time it's occurring to you that a man without Jesus is already condemned the Bible says but the Bible also tells us that God desires that none should perish and he demonstrated his love by giving us the gift of Jesus and let me tell you very quickly there are three gifts we receive when we come to Jesus like you'll be coming now. Number one, the first gift we receive is the gift of the forgiveness of sin. The second gift we receive according to scripture is righteousness, the very righteousness of God. The third gift that we receive is called Zoe, the life of God. These are the three gifts that the believer receives when he comes to Christ. 
let me repeat that for your learning number one the forgiveness of sin number two the imputation of the nature of righteousness and number three the life of God if you are not forgiven you cannot have access to his nature and if you cannot have access to the righteousness of God you cannot receive of his life help those under the anointing I curse that spirit right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare let that lady go free now the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so I'm about to make an altar call no matter how far you are it is at this point I will permit you to come to the front whether you are outside even if you are by the roadside and you're hearing me when it has to do with the business of salvation it is the business of numbers every soul counts every soul counts for those of you who are saying apostle if you will give me a chance I want to make it right genuinely sincerely so tired of playing games tired of playing church tired of playing Christian politics I want to know him this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent or you are saying apostle I truly want to rededicate my life to Jesus I don't want this conference to end as an intelligent communication of truth I really want that life I'm going to count one to five and I'm going to request that you leave your seat as I count and run right to come and stand in front here you don't have to kneel for sake of space make sure you understand what you're doing protocol for those who are coming from outside if it's for salvation please let them come by the time I count five you should be in front here one let's celebrate them as they come is someone celebrating salvation come 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 don't be ashamed come as though you've been invited to receive an award Jalingo, are you tired of celebrating salvation? Come. Don't say there are many people already. Join them. Join them. Join them. God desires that all men be saved and then that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. Keep coming. Keep coming. We're out of time, but for your sake, we will wait. If it's the business of your salvation, we will wait. You are worth our waiting. You are worth his dying for. Come. Come. Truly the greatest miracle. This is not an evangelist sermon. It is truth. The greatest miracle. You bring justification to his death. You bring honor to his sacrifice. You need to join them. Please come. I count five and I begin to pray. And for someone, let me speak to the camera for one moment. I want to speak to someone who is watching right now. I understand that there are television stations that are carrying this broadcast. And I want you to look at me straight to my eye. You are in your home, your office. We are here at Jalingo at Peniel 2024, hosted by the Anglican Communion. I want you to know that the business of surrendering everything to Jesus is not just a church thing. Perhaps you are not even a Christian. You are just watching, scrolling your channel, and you saw this face speaking to you. It's no coincidence. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I'm speaking to you from a heart of love. You need Jesus. He says, ye must be born again. We're honored to have this many. I want you to join them. The Spirit of God is convicting you. Even if you're watching by way of rebroadcast, he's still calling you to make this decision. The decision to make Jesus Lord of your life is, is the wisest decision that any man can make on this side of God's kingdom. And I thank you for lending me your attention. As I lead these our precious brothers and sisters in prayer, I want you to join them. You may be alone, but Jesus is right there with you. So we're going to pray. Thank you all of you who have come. Thank you for the courage to walk to the front. You have done this before him. Some of you are crying. 
don't be ashamed of your tears. This is what it means when he comes to a territory. In order of priority, he comes to save, then to transform. Those who are not saved cannot be transformed. And those who are not transformed cannot be empowered. And those who are not empowered cannot be witnesses. The protocol is salvation, transformation, empowerment. Then you are engraced and given a geography to your witness. You will be given a card. I see counselors giving you a card. Um, please, you may need to pause so that I pray the prayer. But once I pray, you will be given this card. And don't be in a hurry to fill it now. Please let me lead you to pray the prayer. And then I would request that you fill every information truthfully, legibly. You can be sure that your information will not be abused. I believe that there are people who have been trained and they will follow up with you. Um, is there somewhere for them to go after the prayer? Okay, so this is what will happen. Please make sure you get the form before you go back to your seat when you are done praying. And when you pray, for those who are online, when you make this prayer, I believe there are social media links. There should be a, a, a way there, an email or a, a, some, some link. Let us know that you made Jesus Lord of your life and we'll be sure to follow up with you. Lift your hands for those of you who are in front. We used to sing an old hymn in the seminary. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee till the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side. No wonder from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. Say this after me, all of you, with your hands lifted unto Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it as loud as you can one more time. Say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Let me pray for you. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one of you. I just saw something like a dark shadow. Just leaving one of you who is in front here. Cast that spirit now. Out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this once by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that upon the authority of God's word and upon the integrity of your confession of faith, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The power to live the victorious Christian life, I impart upon you. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Alright, so make sure that you receive, if you are yet to receive the... So... Um, give me one of these counselor can I have one of the card let me just show them so this is how it looks please make sure you pick this you pick this let's have there are still people there where are some of the counselors please attend to some of the people who are in that area so make sure you have this the moment you receive this please feel free to go back to your seat once you feel it look for an usher please don't go home with it look for an usher and then pass it to them and then you can leave may God bless you in Jesus name now, two very important announcements. I have the honor of bringing one. I'm told that the, the service tomorrow starts by 6 a.m. on the dot. Am I right on that, sir? Thank you. 6 a.m. Discipline yourself. The conference is a renewal and spiritual growth conference. So take it as a retreat. Are we together? Wake up early. Put your alarm if you need to. Pray. Take a few minutes to stretch in the spirit. Build capacity. Take your shower. Refresh. 
and then reach for this place. We'll have some time in the morning. I believe that the intent behind it is so that we can finish on time and then allow those who need to go to work. And then tomorrow evening, my session tomorrow evening will be a miracle service and we'll take the time to minister, impart graces upon people and trust the Lord that your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to leave you with a challenge. Please make sure you invite everybody. There's so much, as there are so many people, but I believe there is still someone that God wants to touch and it depends on the efficiency of your witness. Call someone, text someone, help someone with transport fare, if that is what it takes. Invite your family, invite someone who is sick, someone who needs to be saved. Tell them the Lord is moving so mightily here at Jalingo and the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. But for now, I speak the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Let his hand rest upon you. Shout a believing amen. amen. Let his hand rest upon you. I pray that as a result of tonight's teaching, you will have a functional appreciation for the supremacy of God's word. Begin to see miracles in your life. Begin to see signs and wonders in your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap. God bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.